Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for those of you who are at different time zones than we are or watching this at a different time. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. Today is Saturday, you know, May we're 28th. We're getting a little bit better at our introductions, I think. Saturday, May 28th. Yeah. This is episode 62, and this is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and stuff like that mm-hmm. in our lives. And we go on tangents. So thank you for... We didn't test the microphone. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. No, it, it's typically, it works pretty well, though. So um, thank you to all the returning viewers, any new viewers. Thank yeah. you so much for stopping by. And welcome. Um, welcome. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe. Do all that YouTube fun stuff. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it, right? I think Let's that's it. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. Two weeks. How have they been? Grand. Year? Two weeks? <laughs> I guess they've been good. Yeah. I don't know that we've I don't done know. Much. We haven't really done much. It's been fine. Um, we've had some really hot days. We've had we some cooler days. It's trying to be spring. Um, We're going to have thunderstorms today. We are. It's very dreary today. It's it like uh, wet and dreary, but it's it hasn't started raining yet. Memorial Day weekend here in the U.S. So, yes, so thank you to all of you um, vets, and we remember. I really... Those went that the other way for a minute and i was like why are you thinking vets like animal vets oh but well thank you to took, animal vets too because it took me a second to get there they have helped us now. through tarquin talk times times he's walking around quite a bit today he is he's looks like he may settle in his bed here yeah we had a very long walk with him yeah Ooh. yeah we can we can say walk now because he's had it correct did any of you guys experience that you have to spell things if they don't get it but once he gets his W-A-L-K, we can say the word. Does Which you sense? just didn't do. You just No, I know. It, so I think it's his habit. But we've had a productive morning already. We went and got our hair cut. We had breakfast, so no stomach rumbling today. We won't be hungry. I may fall asleep halfway through the podcast, I know. I'm, I'm pretty tired now after that. Mm-hmm. We went and took him for a walk, and now we're here. Yes, and um, it is 11.01. 11.01. And look at that. Our oh, time. That's good. We're um, on the East Coast. For all of you people who do not know where Connecticut is, which is one of those really small states. I don't even think we said we were from Connecticut this episode. We're from Stratford, Connecticut. We are. Yep. We are um, sister city to Stratford on Ontario, Canada, and Stratford, England. Yes. We had I remember shift. that. Mm-hmm. You remember that? Like in school, like in school you learned about <clears throat> your sister city? Wasn't well, it like if there was like a nuclear war, like you go to your sister city? No, I don't think so. I think so. No. No, but there was a sister city's choir in Stratford a long time ago. I do remember that. Yeah. I was I was gonna join it and then I was too scared. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I'd be scared now. Good for you. Yeah, I'm a little way bit to more... conquer your fears. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, Except for bees, I have bugs. to get over that. Just bugs in general, but really. I'm getting a little bit better with bugs. Mm, mm. I don't know. You're right. So I think that our two weeks have been boring, y'all. We haven't done much. It's just been nope. work, right? I think so. Just work. That's yeah. it. We did nothing, some yard work. Nothing exciting. I don't think we've gone anywhere, seen anyone, done anything outside of yard work and household stuff. Yes. So with that being said, we'll but we jump. do have some very um, busy weekends coming up. We do. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming so up. That we be have, fun. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that being said, let's just jump into admin stuff. And I okay. think we only have well, we have two things. Our spring cleaning mal is wrapping up. Yeah. So that is going to be it's like three days left, ending on 31st. the thirty first, which is Tuesday. So be sure to get your um, posts in on either the Insta. Or Ravelry, we have the two, the chatter thread and the FO thread. We'll close that like Tuesday and then Wednesday morning. We'll yeah. close it. And then on Instagram, the hashtag is um, NATR Spring Mal 2022. I believe so. Yeah. All of the information that we talk about, including those hashtags and stuff, is listed right down below. Hit the Chevron. Some people said that they couldn't find the Chevron. So I think it Did depends they do away on with the, the Chevron. No, I think it depends on the device that you're watching YouTube from. So oh. uh, watching YouTube is on the a TV, diff- it's hard. Right. On depending on the mobile device or the device, it's a different right. experience. Right. Uh, it's much easier actually to watch YouTube on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet compared to a television. Right. Uh, it's a little bit, you don't have as many options, I feel like, on the TV. Um, so that so is. So if you're watching it on your phone, right next to the little subscribe button, you can just click on that little Chevron. Oh. No, that's an advertisement. Now cl- click on the Chevron. Button. Oh, here's a Chevron here. There's two Chevrons. This one listed right here. Yeah, you now see that? tap on that. You tap on that, it brings you to our show notes. And that's where we have all of our patterns and all those fun things listed down below. Yes. If you've never seen that before. And if you had, thank you for using our show notes. 
So yeah, our spring cleaning now. This is message from Ray. <laughs> yeah, spring cleaning now. Is ending. And yep. then June 1st starts the third Let's Hear For The Boys. Yes, um, we're super excited. And I'll show you during acquisitions, we got a prize donation already, which is absolutely epic. Did it sound like I was slurring epic? my You my did words? slur your words, so I think you might be a little drunk. I totally am not. This is only coffee number three. Correct. Mine too. Guys, I got a second Yeti, which I love, and I want to put stickers on it. But yeah, I think that's it's a great idea. No, I think it's too pretty, so I think I want to get a third Yeti, an in betweener. I want like a papa, and then I want a mama, and then this would be baby. Okay. So I think I'm going to get a third Yeti to put stickers on. I was thinking about putting stickers on this Yeti. I've Maybe. had this for years. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, all right, so let's hear it for the boys. This let's is. Hear it for the... Sorry. Um, well, that's actually what that song is what gave me the idea to do that two years ago. And the thought of this was just as guys in the knitting community, sometimes it can be hard for us to find patterns. And so it's a way to kind of celebrate that. So the idea is just to find patterns that you may knit for yourself, for husbands, sons, grandsons, uncles, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, so we're gonna have a chatter thread. We'll have an FO thread. And we'll do an Instagram. Any, uh, I'll figure that one out. Yeah, we'll we'll just do the same one that we did. Just change the year, but we'll get back to you when we'll put it next down time. Because next time, we'll be like a weekend. Yeah, but yeah, what? so that will be a weekend. A week into the. Oh, a week in. I thought you said weekend. No, week <clears throat> into the. Does it look like my right eye is like twitchy? I don't know. I think I'm struggling today. Do you want to pause? No. Do we ever pause? Is that thing? No, you just get up and go to the bathroom whenever you want. I've done that twice. Mm, maybe more. Podcast. So yeah, so that's let's hear it for the boys, and I think that's all of our admin stuff. We will talk about coupon codes. We do that at the end, right before we talk about hap, uh, owl post and some break in the bank. Yes. So. So today, what you have to look forward to, I have uh, zero knitting FOs, but I do have one FO. I, I have, have one FO. Good. And I have two whips. Whoops, whoops. I have... Four whips, wow, that's three a... of which are new cast on since last Lovely. time. Lovely. Nothing of mine is new. My FO is new. Your FO is new, yeah. But I posted on Instagram for you sleuths out there. All right. All right. So let's jump into <clears> it. <throat> let's do it. Please, start with your FO. Okay, my FO is not a knitting FO, but I love him so much. I forgot to bring my bag up, but that's okay. So um, this is Cranky Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's adorable. This is a kit that we got from um, Going Gnome when we went to the Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival. I did those two gnomes up there. I still haven't fixed their eyeballs. Um, but I got I had another kit, which was the frog kit. And this is the, the frog kit. My guy's legs are a little bit... It doesn't Smaller. matter. So the, the fun thing about needle felting... This is needle felted, if you guys don't know. Um, the fun thing about needle felting is that you just have fun with it. Like it gives you a general idea. There are some step-by-step -step instructions and some pictures and stuff, but, um, as you're like building your critter or whatever you're doing, you know, you add the personality to it. So like his personality started coming through. And when I was done and I added the lips in there, <laughs> Kevin's like, wow, he looks angry. I'm like, well, but that's kind of what he's supposed to look like. Yeah, on the I mean, picture. this one looks. Yeah, this one. It's it's similar. Yeah. I um, mean, he doesn't look too thrilled with. But then I was like, you're right. He does look a little bit cranky, and his eyes are kind of like a little bit crooked. His legs are a, a little bit too thick. Wait, these are his legs? Too long. Yeah, these are his back legs. What do you oh, think they were? I have no idea. I know. So you can see, like, they're supposed to be kind of like rounded legs in the back. Do you see that? Yeah. Yeah, mine. I didn't. Are more like wings. Maybe Shush. you have a no. So here's what I ha I have to pin them down. See what that looks. Oh, like. Oh, I see. So yeah. I have to um I have to felt them back down in the back a gotcha. little bit more. The direction said to like make these triangles, and I did, and I was like, what the hell are these for? And I made them a little bit too big, but it doesn't matter because it's cranky Frank, and who cares? And he's cranky because are you gonna bring him to work? He's got little feet in the back. I needed. I wanted to make these a little bit bigger. I kind of feel like he's more of a mythical creature than a frog. He, he could be. But he might he might be jumping. He could be a cross between a frog and a fairy right now. All I know is I am having a blast with needle felting. It, it's so much fun. The eyes are not 
these eyes came with it, so I glued them on. So I did not have. If you haven't I seen, love it. these so, are my attempts at eyeballs. Somebody said There's we got a one. bunch of names for them. One of them was Oakley and something else, and I thought that was cute since they're like tree related, like Oakley. Mm. And it smells so sheepy. Yeah, that's like I. <laughs> it does actually. Yeah. So these were my eyes, and I'm glad that the eyes came with this kit. I think F- Frankie, Frank, Frank, and this one might be relatives. So they're all gonna live together. Are you gonna take them to work? No, I'm gonna leave them here. Oh, I so at work I only I have one shelf that I have my crochet people on, but you can't really see it because now I started I had to put other things on the shelf like work related. So my desk is not big enough because I have so much crap everywhere. I have nothing at my desk. No. Somebody actually asked one of my coworkers if anybody sits at my desk because there's nothing on my really? desk. Yeah, I don't bring anything in. So um, Cranky Frank, I love him so much. I think he's very fun. This has been a blast. Obviously, it's only my second like project. But I do want to bring his legs down a little bit more. But I was kind of proud Good of myself. Job. Like I yeah. added little colors in there. You know? Yeah, no, it looks good. Yeah. So these are his legs. I could probably define them a little bit more, but and then these are I mean I think they're pretty defined. Feet, but um they're a little bit smaller than the front ones, which they're they're supposed to be a little bit bigger. Maybe it's just for swimming. I think it doesn't matter. Yeah. You do you when it comes to needle felting. And I'm I'm um fully addicted. And I may have purchased another I did purchase something else, and I'll show you that uh during our acquisitions phase. But Cranky Frank. Cranky Frank. He's so cute and he'll live I'm not sure exactly where, but he looks good there. Right? Oakley and I forget the other one. I thought that Oakley and whatever were good names. They were clever. There. All right. So this is the start of something. Just like a lot of you made comments, if you go back and start watching some of our older episodes, like in the beginning, this shelf used to be full of a lot of books and then... Well, to in yarn all honesty, over. though, the books are all over here. The books are all over here, but a lot of the yarn used to be in a closet. It wasn't behind us. You could tell yourself that there was some yarn in the closet. Whatever. So anyway, um, you might see some. Maybe we'll have some cubes of needle felting because I'm so excited to start this new craft. Craft. So yeah, going gnome is where I got these from. I'll link this kit down below, and I got another one. Um, which I'll show you, which is really, really cute. Are we going to clear one of these out for candle wax and stuff like that one? No, they should go someplace else. <laughs> All right. So I have that's, one my, that's my FO. And I have one FO. Now, however, the ends are not woven in, but I'm still considering it finished. Of course. So this is my Boceron. Yay. dun dun dun, dun. Started in 2020, finished in 2022. It's really good, Kev. It's really nice. It fits actually really well, but I will say... I almost feel like we need to turn that light on. I mean, give it a... I, I, I mean, you can. So, it might be so I will say, I did have to... Um, I messed up the pattern. I think we're a little bit brighter. It's fine. Um, I actually think we're quite shadowy now. Would you mind shutting it off, please? Whoa, ha, ha, ha. Thank you. So, all right. Let's start from the beginning. This is start the Boceron. From the very beginning. It a is very a very good place to start. DK weight sweater with some mosaic um, patterning up here yeah. in the top of the yoke. And that is the only part of the sweater that I did correctly. <laughs> that you know of. That I know of. I could have messed that up too. So, I will say I love the neck on this. The Me neck too. fits really well. As there's you can some short see, rows back there. Which there's is some nice. short row shaping on the back of the neck. Yeah. Which is really great. It's a tubular cast on. It is knit on US 7, 6, and 5s. I did 6, 5, and 4. Mm. But then... I did for my arms afterwards, the sleeves, I did seven and five for the ribbing. So we'll talk about the mistake I made. Mistakes. Mistakes, multiple. There are no mistakes well, in no. knitting. It's actually one mistake. I just did it on both the body and the sleeves. So the body. Consistent. 
and sleeves were supposed to be stockinette. And I read the pattern as slip one, knit one to marker. So I slipped one and knit one to marker. So I actually have like this, you can see some like faux ribbing. It's like a broken rib almost. Well, the sleeves are because my slip one, knit one changed after every decrease round. Of and here's the body you can see. So it gives That's it a little so something. Nice, though. Yeah, I think it's great. It did make, obviously, because I'm creating a tighter fabric, the midsection was a little bit tighter than I would have liked it to have been. So I did block this pretty aggressively. So you can see here, it kind of bumps out a little bit because of my blocking. So I'll fix that. The next time I block it, I'll put it away for the summer and I'll probably just re-block it. It's so good. I love your colors. Can you talk about the yarn and stuff? So the yarn is um, Taki yarn. Mm -hmm. It is, I actually left my bag with all of it downstairs. You did? So you're not prepared? No. Are we but ever prepared? I have a skein of each leftover. So this was my contrast color. And... This was the main color, this gray. I don't think they have... I think they have numbers. Let's see. Yeah, color 17. And I think this is like 11. Wrong, three. So it's a really nice yarn to yeah, work with. Yeah, the sweaters I will say, feels really um, plush, like soft and, and plush. Yeah, it's actually really... It's not itchy. No. Um, I don't think that this is... So it just says a hundred super hundred percent super wash wool. So it's not a merino. It may be a merino blend. Maybe a blend. Um, I wonder. I here. Let's try to put it on. It's just super hot. Maybe That's why I didn't want to wear it. And because I have a bunch of ends that need to be woven in. So just to give you guys an idea, we'll throw it on real quick. I think it looks really good so here so you can see it kind of like puffs out right there when it's just like flat you can see right there so i'll fix that with blocking again but i think it fits well it would look i put it on too yeah if it feels good it fits nicely mm -hmm. the neck's actually pretty good i think i'm just yeah. pulling because i'm pulling it down here it's sure. stretching out the neck but if i just left it alone like you probably don't need to wear anything underneath this if you didn't want to like a t-shirt or anything. Right. If I actually, I was thinking like I probably a, would do like a tank top, a tank top underneath mm -hmm. it and it'd be fine. It'd be really nice to over a collar shirt. Collar shirt would look nice under this, like mm. a white probably, but it fits well. It probably fit better if I followed the pattern. Um, and I don't Will know. Will you put your modifications on your Ravelry page? No. Because I wouldn't recommend doing these modifications because it would fit so much better if yeah. you stuck with the pattern. Yeah. Uh, but I I love the pattern. I thought it's written well. Yes. If you read it correctly. Right. And I'm glad to get this done too. It felt like, this is going to sound weird, I don't know. It kind of felt like a weight because I've had it for so long. Mm -hmm. And I find if I have something on the needles for quite a while, I... I'm okay with that and then I just forget about it and maybe I just never finish it but I wanted to start other sweaters and I wouldn't let myself do that until right. this was finished so so now you can do other things yes great as you will see but yeah so well, this congratulations is... I'm very proud of Thanks. you I'm so happy that you actually finished it me too yeah and um the bind off on these is a tubular bind off no it's not it's a sewn bind off which I actually really like doing a sewn bind off so it's my, the um, it's the sewn bind off at the the bottom hem as well. Yes, so it's a sewn bind off. It's nice. It creates a really nice edge. Yeah, on both the sleeves. Yeah, it's nice. And the bottom hem. Yeah, and it's a one by one rib. And sewn bind offs are very stretchy. Yeah, um, I wonder. Yeah, sewn bind off is super easy to do. Yeah, actually. So that yeah, if is you know how to like do a Kitchener stitch or my bows are on. Very good job. Thank you. Thank you. Super and that's... good job. Do you think you'll wear that to Rhinebeck maybe? Uh, or bring it for the weekend? I may bring it. It depends on... I mean, Rhinebeck's really going to depend on what the weather looks like that. Yeah. You know, weekend last year, 
It was hot on Saturday. Well, last year, actually, I was thinking about it. What was probably perfect because you got to wear shawls one day and, a sweater and then the next. sweater the next. You could be very comfortable. Yeah, you could have gotten away with just a shawl the <clears throat> second day, too. It was oh, a little it was gray. Windy. Remember, it was windier? I don't know. All right. And so that is our FOs. Let's continue on with the Kevin show. All right. Because I only have the two whips. All right. So I'm going to start with one that you have seen. I didn't make much progress on this because I did put it on hold to do some other stuff. So this is living in my beard of pearl bag Yay. that they made for us, Justin and Caleb. And I'm in the middle of a row. So, hold on. You're in the middle of a row. I'm in the middle of a row. So this is just my half and half wrap. Last time you guys saw it, I was here. So I did about maybe half an inch to an mm -hmm. inch. It's a lot of stitches, though. You have a lot of stitches on the needle. It is. There's 260 stitches on the needle. You do short rows. So you lose a stitch every oh. two rows. Um, and I am knitting this out of Linen Quill, which is a beautiful yarn. Yes. This is Pearl Soho. It is... 50% fine highland wool, 35% alpaca, and 15% linen. So these are my two colors. Kettle black, salt and pepper will be the other half. And it's a very relaxing knit. Mm -hmm. We'll have this link down below too. But this, I used to think when people were saying linen quill, I used to think that they were saying lin and quill. Oh. You know, but it's linen quill. Just in case anybody else thought that. But it's a very soft, squishy yarn yeah and it's going to be on hold for quite a while because i have a couple things i have one thing that's a time crunch that time. i need to work on i'm but, a little nervous about that so you may not see this for a little bit but i do love the pattern it's a free pattern um and they always have their linen quill on yeah. sale so if it's something that you want to check out keep an eye on pearl soho's website they have really good sales on their yarns so you can pick them up for a pretty decent price that or if you're looking for some cotton you can shop shop kevin's stash because he's got about 150 skeins of cotton yarn that's rude oh you know what Next. i didn't show it hold on the pattern yeah do i even have it i don't it's not because yes you do yeah but it's not in my um oh no you don't it's not in my no, shawl you were probably looking at um the on the website Oh, here it is. I put it in the wrong folder. Oh. No, that's my dishcloth. I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to save it. Okay. Well, right. it's free if you go to the um, Pearl Soho's website. Site. And we'll have the pattern linked below. A lot of people have knit that. Oops. This should be it. Half and half triangles wrapped by Pearl Soho. This is it here. And I'm oh, doing, look, 15% off your first order. And I'm doing the biggest size. It's literally called bigger. I think either... Look at all the colors that they have. Tons. And they also offer it in worsted. Wow. Yeah. What's the price of it currently? Does it say? No. Keep scrolling, maybe? Okay. Oh, no. This is gonna. This is just going to take you for the kits. They have the... Yeah, the bundles. They have 50 colors. Ooh. Oh, I love that color combination there. Brown? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's 25% off. So right now, a kit for it is normally 111. It's currently 83... 25. 25 US. And you get three skeins, six skeins of yarn. Yeah. That's not bad. No. That's... Yeah, that's good. Okay. You're up. No, I'm not, because you still have one more. Oh, okay. You want me to go again? Yeah. All right. And so then we'll get we'll get caught up. All right. So this one will be another quick one. This is a new cast on, but I didn't do much. I love this bag so this much. Bag one of my favorites. This bag is from Yarn Creative. It's a huge mm -hmm. tote bucket. or bucket, right? Yeah. So this um, and it has like a pocket somewhere here, right? So pocket. I think there are two pockets. Another yeah. pocket and. Then this is the inside. This I the, love because it makes it even bigger. Yeah, with the drawstring. So I pulled it out. Yeah. 
and I'm cast on for my Icelandic sweater. This will be this a Rhinebeck gorgeous. sweater. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. So this is, I, I know it's spelled like John. I'm sure it's not said, spoken like John, but I have no idea how to say it properly. John. 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 Okay. So this is a Lopi pattern. I bought the Lopi yarn from the Icelandic store. Super inexpensive. The kit was like $40 for all the yarn. And I, it's great quality. It's going to last forever. My, correct. Yeah, it's going to last forever. I was watching Cabin Boy Knits. Christopher yes. finished this. Once he finished, I was like, crap, I need to buy yes. it and make it. So I just did a quick cast on. I did not swatch, which I'm kind of nervous about because sometimes I feel like I'm a loose knitter. So I just did a quick cast on my sleeve and I'm going to use that kind of as a swatch. And if I find that it's too big, I could take it out and I wouldn't have That's put much time That's a great idea. Where did you find that idea? So I see that on a bunch of podcasts. You're such an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like working with the lopi do you like it it doesn't feel as much like twine as you would think no it's different knitting with it don't you think than like it is touching it here it is and it's a very inconsistent spin yes so you have your thicker and thinner parts um sometimes you can see the plies almost coming undone, undone. Mm-hmm. i did a tubular cast on for this it didn't call for it but i just like a tubular cast on it's not super stretchy though as of right now so i don't know i don't know maybe it is yeah Mm. i guess it is totally so i am doing the extra large i believe which fits a 42 inch chest Mm -hmm. and it is not a hugely size inclusive pattern i think that's the only downsize i think the the highest that is is 113 centimeters so 107 is 42 so 113 should be about 44. yeah that's not very size inclusive um and that would be the extra extra large mm-hmm. the design um nope we're not even gonna try it here's uh, yeah i'm not gonna try to say the name of the designer hold hold and Hulda. then the, and then the rest of the pattern is uh her name is unsayable by me. So we'll see. This will be a Rhinebeck sweater. I will do my two sleeves, then do the yoke. No, it's bottom up. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Bottom up and then yoke and attach. So mm-hmm. I'm going to pray to the knitting gods that my gauge is okay. I'm not too concerned because it's a non super wash yarn that it will grow. Right. Um, so, but you can manipulate it, um, very easily when it is wet, I found. Oh, and I am using the exact colors in the pattern. So these are the four colors. Yeah. She got black and then three grays. Yeah. Really, really pretty. Yeah. I'm excited to, um, start it. I, I just cast it on the other day, wanted to just get it on the needle so that I didn't like dilly dally and wait mm-hmm. to do it. I was afraid that if I didn't cast it on right away, I probably never would. Yeah. So. And you're doing those on small uh, circumference circular needles. Correct. I'm using the blue Chowgu needles. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is the needle sizes use are a four millimeter or a US six and a four and a half millimeter or a US seven. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I currently have that on the, the mini chow goose and then once i have enough stitches i will switch to regular probably not till i get to the body i'll probably leave it on those for the entire arm or sleeve and yeah so that is that that's sweater fantastic cast on great job why thank you why don't you go next okay well thanks for asking um i am i didn't put much progress on it i've showed this for, for a while but this is living in my naughty knitting sack with our mermen in there who are lovely um this is my so basic sweater by maxim sear uh we did talk about this a few times this is going to be on the needles i think for a while because um it's a fingering weight sweater i'll show you the um 
the pattern for those of you who have not seen this before. It's a really lovely, simple sweater. Um, so it's basic. A, it's so basic. It's got a little pocket David. that you can add after. Oh my God. So funny. We are so addicted now to Shit's Creek. We see what everybody is saying. You see the little sleeve details there. Um, so I'll show you that on my sweater. And this is, oh, I wanted to, that's okay. All right. I, don't, I actually haven't picked this up for a, quite a few days. Um, I would say maybe like a week almost. Yeah, I maybe. don't know that you've worked on it. No, because I was weekend. really trying to focus on the shawl. This is knit out of Primrose yarn that we got mm -hmm. at Rhinebeck last year. I thought it would be fun to use yarn that I got at Rhinebeck to make a, a Rhinebeck sweater for this year. This is a pretty basic one, so I will wear it you know, one day and I'll bring my change of clothes because, you know. You're going to have like a, I will. a, you're going to bring a bag to Rhinebeck with a change yes, of clothes. Yes, because, you know, you never know and people, you see everybody the whole time. You want to change things up and wear things. All right. So this is uh in their house base, their two-ply fingering. Um, It is 50% Shetland wool and 50% Merino, approximately 400 yards. The colorway is Comet. And we think that it's probably like, Maybe comet like the reindeer, because I can't see this like a comet like flying through the sky. You know okay, I mean? that makes sense. Yeah, so it's a nice, really nice brown. It's a coffee brown. It is. It's a very coffee color. To yes. Me. Um, I think I'm in the middle of a row. What happened? Nothing. Everything is just great. Uh, I don't know where I was last time. Is that your stitch marker? Oh your yeah. Your progress Look, guys, I didn't make, make much progress. I did about an inch and a half. Hey. An inch but is, hey. No, yeah. That, that's some progress. It is a little bit of progress. So this is the sweater here. I think this is going to look really cool. I mean, I think um, I'm going to like it. And some people did make some comments about having like a fun yellow pocket. I think, I think a mustardy cool. yellow. I, if you were going to do yellow, I think it should be like a brown. I don't know. Yellow. Some people were voting for like a neon pocket. I think a brown yellow. We'll see, um, but this is the sleeve detail here. It's really just um, some ribbing, which is really cool. Um, it'll add a little something, something. I think I might, once I finish my shawl, I'm going to um, go back. This will be my, I might go to the sleeve for this because I really want to cast on a pair of socks, but I don't want to have like two like just stuck in it things. Although maybe I'll do a pattern sock. Max has a new sock pattern out. No. Oh no, it's not out yet. No. It'll be coming out, I think, soonish. What is it? It's a DK pattern based on his um, um, single it. malt. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it looks really, really cool, but it's a DK pattern. Correct. And we were talking, oh, it's DK. That's right. It's DK. Yeah. I think you can hold fingering double for DK, can't you? Yes. I personally, I'm not. I probably wouldn't, but. I don't know that I'm a fan of the fabric that it makes. To yeah. Me, D fingering held double makes a tighter fabric than regular DK. Yeah. So this is going to be it. We'll see. I am knitting the... Um, 41 and a quarter inch chest um which my gauge i didn't get spot on gauge we talked about this in the, the last podcast so i did some maths and um worked it out and so that was the correct size for me um what size needles are you knitting on uh thanks for asking i think it's a us4 yeah it's a us4 3.5 okay. millimeter needles um these are on my chow goose i can't wait for the new chow goose set to come out so we, you and I have talked about this, and if you guys don't know, Chowgu is releasing a new set, a mixture of wooden metal needles this year. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. I think it's called Forte. The, the body. The tip is um, metal. The rest is wood. So, yeah. yeah, it's called Forte. And this is looks sleek. what they look like. As of right now, they have the swivel cords. Yes, which are gonna be great. I do love a good swivel cord. So yeah. my only thing with this, as far as I know, they're only gonna be available in five inch tips, and I tend to use my four inch tips more. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Like it's not something I I would get. I don't know if that I would get it right away. Yeah. But if they if they had four inch tips, um, that's it. I'm sold. So you know what I'm really excited about. Um, no, tell us. Because I haven't done a fingering weight sweater before, you know, I'm so used to, like, I think I've only done the worsted weight. You go through yarn so fast, like so many skeins of yarn. This is only, this is, um, 
this here is my second skein of yarn. Oh wow! And I've done all of that already. That's all. That's great. Isn't that good? And How I still, many, you are you five. mocking me now? No, and you have five skeins. I remember. Yeah, I have three more skeins left. Because they. So have I a think deal. that should be enough. Because I was getting nervous that I wasn't going to have enough. But, oh, you'll be fine. You'll yeah. probably have a full skein left over, if I not know, like a skein really and a cool, half. Because this would it would be nice to like make a little complimentary thing. So that's that. I love the fabric that it's making. You could do a sock head. Just a plain solid socket with the leftover. Mm, that could be fun. It'd be warm too. But I'm going to probably do that with my leftovers for the shawl that I'll show. Because I'm going to have a lot of that yarn left over too. And I might do something like stripey or something. Or I might do a fun. muscle bro with it. Muscle bar. Muscle bro. So that's it. That is my So Basic sweater, which I will get back to shortly. Good job. Not much progress, but hey. All right. So next up, I have... This bag is so great. I love this bag. So this is from Scrappy Angel. This is the Aaron bag. Faux leather, cute foxes. Then you open it up. Boop. Two pockets inside. And I leave it on the floor next to me yeah. just like this. And it's perfect. It stays open. Yes. It's really, really great. All right. So this is a new cast on. I have cast on with Aaron a Fiverr Hustle. We have cast on the new shawl by Stephen West called Garter Abyss. And Aaron and I dyed up our own fades for this. So the pattern is knit on a US 5, I believe. Let's see. Yes, a US 5 or a 3.75 millimeter needle. <coughs> sorry god bless you thank you so i actually made sure i was at the beginning of a row for this so here's the progress i made i cast this on last sunday i was super excited i wanted to um aaron and i said we were going to cast it on last weekend and i waited like pretty last minute to yeah. get a cast on because i was working on the sweater a lot and Here's where I'm at so far. I've added in this, just added in the second color. The you could actually see it a little bit better here. Gorgeous. This is the wrong side. So it's not going to be super stripey, but this is Asteroid Belt. The second color has no name. And here's going to be my color palette. All right. So Asteroid Belt, hold that, please. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. And then this is unnamed. And then this will be my middle color. Mm. And then this. And then this. I love it. So this is Asteroid Belt. This is Fire Pit. And then this one, I died before. I don't remember the name, though. I'll have to check. But it's like a brownie gray. Yeah. I'm actually quite happy. This is gorgeous. This looks almost coffee-like. I'm really happy with this one. Yeah. I, act, I use the same Is that dye, It should be. I use the same dye style as for this and this. Yeah. I don't remember. Um, they're all repeatable. I wrote them all down. Oh, that's great. But in this I've done before, I think this is a good tonal. Yeah, me too. Really, really nice. Very pretty. So I'm, I'm super excited. It's fun to knit. It's got to be fun to knit your own yarn. It is. And it's a super easy pattern. Yeah. I'm going to see if I can show it a little bit better it's grown quite a bit oh yeah it sure has hold that needle sure. for me please and then i'll hold this one to make sure nothing falls off All right so here we are yeah, so you if you can need... see it's just garter and yarn overs guys yeah and super and the panels that you're creating with the yarn overs are going to create that little like spiral shape correct so it will look so here's kind like, of like that's kind of neat So I have quite a ways to go, yes. though. This pattern will end up with over a thousand stitches on the needle when mm. you start working on the border. So that's a lot. And what I'm doing on this side, so this is the wrong side here, but to keep track of my repeats, this is where I started. Uh -huh. And then I had to do however many rows and then on the first row of the next section, I put another stitch marker, do however many rows, first row of the next section, stitch marker. So this was section one, start of section two, 
Start of section three and now I'm on section four. Yeah. Because I have to repeat the same section a certain number of times. So it's easier for me to keep track that way than writing on the pattern. I've never done that before. Written on a pattern? No. Oh. Tracked it this way. Yeah. I was no, trying I think, to... Oops, sorry. I kicked the camera. You did. I was just trying to figure out what was going to work best for me. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Kind of like how you keep track of your rows on socks. If you put a stitch marker every 10th row, right? then you know. Right. So right, right, right. for me, that just has worked out pretty well. And guys, this is one of my faves. This bag is incredible. It reminds me of an old, um, like a doctor's bag. bag. Oh, yeah, kind of. Right? Yeah. Doctor's bag. Psh. I think she did some with handles, too, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't somebody add handles? Carrie did, but Carrie. I feel like I saw um, that Angel at, did some with some handles really? on it. Really? Yeah. It's great quality. Yeah. Great quality. I, I just, I love, yeah. I love this style of bag. I yeah. think it's fun. Yeah. Mine is, I'm going to be using mine for my next, I have two, um, we don't usually do this often, but I have two future cast-ons as well that I'll talk about. I have like 5,000 future <clears throat> cast-ons. I know, but I'm going to stick to it. I mean, this one, one of them has been sitting for almost a year. Um, me? Back to you. Okay, so this is almost finished. Almost. But not quite. So this is the Barndom by Stephen West. And a lot of you had said, um, and I don't think I talked about this, a lot of you had said Barndom um, in like Norwegian or in that part of the world means like childhood is kind of like childhood and oh. he was inspired when he was a kid i think going into like a you know barn looking at all of those things so it kind of was interesting how um like the beams the crossing beams. yeah how it, like in the barn doors and all yeah. that stuff so this is one of stephen west's earlier patterns um it's from about 12 10 years ago um and i had some trouble i wanted to cast this on as when i when I was relatively new knitter, I'm still, I mean, I'm, I've been knitting for two and a half years. So like two and a half years ago, I wanted to knit this shawl, but I kept having a lot of trouble with it. And I think I mentioned this in the last podcast as well. It's, it's because unfortunately there's a, an error in the pattern and, and one of the, uh, a couple of different places, there's, there's a few different errors and there's been some errata that was released to fix that, but it still didn't, didn't address all of the errors there were still a few more um and so a combination of my own like Knowledge. experience now with knitting and knowing like how to read my stitches and which direction cable should be going and like looking at construction and looking at some other people's project pages on Ravelry I was able to kind of get get it to where it's supposed to be so my goal I will be adding all of this stuff because it's so important for me, I think to look at Ravelry and see when people actually put project, like put notes on there. And I feel like I need to give back because, you know, it's give back. So I'm going to give back. Give so I'm, back. I'm keeping track of all of the things that I found and I'll be adding it once I'm completed with this. So I don't have very much more to go, but I will show you. I am actually super happy that I am, I chose these colors. Cause yeah, everything that we have is like super bright. Like I have a lot of, I'm very colorful apparently with my knitting. Well, yeah. My sweaters are neutral. We're very well, muted this week actually. Yes. All of our colors. I but I'm loving this. Can you just hold this? Just so I'm afraid it's going to slip Sure off. thing. Just watch the needle because it's, it's pretty. So this is what I have so far. I was um, there where the little uh, cupcake is. I can't remember where we got that from. Somebody donated that to us. Oh, this is from... It's a strawberry shortcake cupcake, which is my Pacific favorite. Moon Knits? Yes, maybe it is. So I finished... Can you lift that up a little bit? So here's the um, here's the cast on over here. I think I was... Obviously, I was like right here where we separate. So I did all of those um, cables there. And then now I'm starting on the border, which you can really see the um the lines there so i did decide to do the three color version of this there's a two color and a three color version i chose 
again from Connecticut Sheep and Wool, um, got Plies and Hellhounds yarn. And the dark color is Midnight, no, Nightmares plus 10. The, this okay. one is uh, Chalk Dust. And then I needed a third color and I found, and I was looking for like a medium type of gray, um, something in between these two. And I found this yarn, which actually has like speckles or like some to tonality, like of the dark and the white kind of like mixed in. There's some purple in there too. Yeah, it's really good. So this is actually a one of a kind um, by uh, Dyed by Dells that we had in our stash. So I pulled this down off of the shop, off the shop, off of the shelves, which is basically it is kind of a shop. yarn pantry. It's a BFL sock. Uh, his one of a kind is uh, Yolo. His Yolo base. You only live once, and it is eighty percent superwash BFL and twenty percent nylon. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm loving how it looks right now. I love the grays. This is like this is my color palette really in real life. I usually wear grays and like True. dark neutrals and stuff. But that's why sometimes you need a pop of color. So that's I know, what a shawl's but I, good for. And that is. Hat. But I'm loving that this is not that. Doesn't it look cool, though? It does. I think that you're being very assholish today. <laughs> so this is my barndom, and I'm very excited about it. No matter what Kevin says, I'm very happy with this. I love how this is this stripe is turning out here too. And it's not in the pattern, but I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bind it's a um a I cord bind off. I think I'm going to bind off in the dark. In the um, Maybe. Yeah. Or why don't you stripe it? No. That's too much work. I just don't know if I'll have enough. I should have enough. Yeah, you will. It's going to be like 600 stitches I think by the by the time it's done. That's fine. So I have Wait, can I um hold on. Yes. I just want to see what. Maybe. I'm thinking about the bind off in the dark. I just wanted to see what your other colors kind of look like. What would you be binding off? What color otherwise? Uh, this. I'd be binding off this guy. I would bind off with this. I think that would look great. We'll see. What do you all think? So I'm hoping to get this done over the weekend. So I have um, four of these light colored stripes. I just need, to, and there's like three rows in between each one. I'm not giving really much away. You can obviously see that. But um, I have one more of these stripes and then three more rows. So I'll be done hopefully this weekend. So the dark I would look off. I think kind the dark of, would look cool. Because it would. Yes. It would. Uh, and, um, frame that. Yes. Frame the whole section. So I think it could look, look nice. cool. Especially like with the. The grays that I have. Yeah. I know it's not anything like... But wait till you see. I have some colors Ground coming Groundbreaking. Just wait. Would you stop? Do you know where that's oh from? Oh, God. No. Devil Wears Prada. Groundbreaking? Yeah, where... They, I forget what it was. I, um, Where she was like, oh, floral for spring. Groundbreaking. Oh. <laughs> we should watch that. We I know. I actually Blu -ray. keep... I keep thinking it. I keep uh, seeing it on the shelf. And I'm like, oh, I should probably watch that. I haven't watched and, it. And um, this is living in my Katie Did bag. One uh, that we got at her trunk show in at West Westport Yarns. These are cool. Her cool bags that you can pull them down to make like a little. Uh, yeah, it's another bucket style another bag. Bucket style, which is really cool. So if it's a three skein shawl, in there. It does. Very nicely. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, bud boy. And that's hey, that's all my knitting. Um, I have one more. So this one's kind of funny. You guys, I've, you've seen it a bunch, this pattern. It's Dotted Rays by Stephen West. Probably be my third or fourth one. No, third? Third. Yeah, probably my third. This is living in a bag by an unknown maker. I won at Fiber Hustle Bingo. Oh yeah, there's no tag in there? Chip made it, but he's an unknown maker. Oh. Chip doesn't Chip really make it. Chip needs to get himself together. So, if you guys recall, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that my mom had asked that I make a dotted raise for her physical therapist, and I bought the yarn at 
Connecticut Sheep and Wool, and also at Look at us Haven. using yarn that we just bought at a yarn festival. I know. So, funny story about this is I cast it on about two weeks ago, and then I just kind of put it on hold because I wanted to finish the sweater. And I got super excited to cast, or cast on the Garter Abyss by Stephen West. And then I talked to my mom yesterday, and she said, Kevin, um, have you worked on that thing? For my physical therapist. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, what thing? I was like, she's like, that that thing I asked you to work on? I was like, you didn't ask me to work on anything. And then she said, Kevin Michael. And I was like, oh shit, I'm in trouble. And then she's like, that thing for my physical therapist. I was like, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Now I know. So I was like, yes, I started it. He has two weeks to finish it. I have two weeks to finish it. And I ripped it out last night because I had made a mistake. So I cast on again last night. And here's where we are so far. I actually kind of like it. Yeah, I, I like it too. I think Here's my main me. color, which the is called... Physical therapy, she, liked, she wanted that green. Yeah, right? she wanted an olive green. This was the closest I could get, but I didn't want to knit in one color, so I was selfish and I got a second color for it. Well, you're and not then guess. that second color made it feel too Christmassy, so I got another second color for it. And the yarn that I'm using is from um, Shirsty Cat Designs. Colorway is called Northside. This is a 7525 BFL and it's 464 yards for 100 grams. My second color got at Knit New Haven. This is spun right round. Oops. You spin me right round. Mm -hmm. This is called In the Pines. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice, like, has some blues and greens and grays. I just love it. I want I love more it of too. it for myself. Yeah. I almost thought last night. You'll to, have a lot of it left. To take it that blue out and not use it and be selfish and keep this for myself. But I didn't. Good for you. Not so, being selfish. I'm going to see how much I can get done in two weeks. I don't know what size I'm going to make. Yeah. I may do an in-betweener. But it's a garter, um, garter stitch shawl with some yarn overs. And I'm striping only on my yarn over rows. So it's only a two row stripe. It's going to make for a lot of ends. Mm -hmm. So I'll probably weave these in today just so I don't have so many and do every like fourth yeah. yarn over row. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shawls. I think it's a great beginner. I shawl. still haven't done one. I know. I think you should now. I think, well, not like now, now, but you should give it a shot. Because it really is super easy. It's garters and yarn overs. And some, I think I was getting messed up on the yarn um, overs and not understanding. Knit front and backs. Mm -hmm. So, again, this is the shawl I recommend. This and um, Pure Joy are the two shawls yeah. I kind of recommend. I did the Because Pure Joy. it's not super boring. Because the shawl can get boring if you're just doing stock right. net. It's and not super boring, but it's definitely TV knitting. Absolutely. You know? And I use this start stitch marker to remind me where I need to stop after my short rows. Yeah. So I knit up until here. I turn, move it however many stitches, place it, and then that's where I turn the next time. Yeah. So it's another good way to kind of keep track of where you need to be. It's not something they include in the pattern, but it's been super helpful for me. I use that here. I've used it on Pure Joy. Anytime I need um, to kind of know knit until this part yeah i put a stitch marker if it's not mentioned really nice so yeah and then i think what i'll do is the final section i'll probably finish in this great idea so i'll do the final so that'll section. be very reminiscent then of the pure joy because that last section is right Ooh. i'm sorry i keep trying to stretch out my feet why don't you stretch out your feet that way because i have the other leg of the other thing you're going to give people motion sickness. I apologize. And I apologize to the people. One okay. other thing about this pattern, if you do this, um, and I don't know if I mentioned, guys, it is knit on a US 6, which is a 4 millimeter? 4.5 millimeter? No, 4. I'm pretty sure it's a 4. Yeah, because a 7 is a 4.5, isn't it? I don't know. I'm checking now. I don't know either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, four millimeter. Mm -hmm. There is also one in here for worsted weight that is knit on an eight millimeter. Oh. 
What I did for this, it calls for a provisional cast on to do the, your iCore tab. I watched his video. Um, he doesn't do that any longer. He changed the way he does an iCore cast on. So if you do decide to knit this, just check out his YouTube video on doing an iCore tab and he'll explain it and don't use the, the, the provisional, provisional cast on. It's not really necessary. So that is that. That's lovely. Lovely. I think that's everything, right? That's all the knitting. Yeah. You want to talk about my future projects? Does anybody want to know? I'll do one and then that'll that'll um, bring us into some of our happy mail and stuff. Do you and think, talk about the second one. speaking of future projects, do you think I should bring yarn down for a second sweater? What do you mean? Do you think I should bring my yarn down for a second sweater and cast that on also? Like to have two sweaters on the needles? Yeah. If you'd like. That's a lot. You're going to do the plotolope? No. What sweater then are you going to do? Oh, your ones in floral. Oh. You could, but then you might get distracted and not work on anything else. No, you have to You have to be monogamous. Your mom is... You have. See, this is what you said yesterday. Mm -hmm. I can do it in two weeks. It's no, like I totally could do it in two weeks. I'll be fine. If you don't need on anything else. No, I could on other things. Okay. We have a three-day weekend. I get all the lot. You're of right, but you don't knit on days that we podcast typically. But maybe I will today. Maybe I'll change my ways. Maybe we got everything else done. I just have to do. I would do the second load of laundry. Right? Is mm. that all we have to do today? Mm. That'll be nice. Yeah. Truck won't be relaxed and tired. We have food already. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Okay. So this I bought last year. Did we buy this or was this gifted to us? I don't know. I'll have to see to know. Because I have no idea what you're about to show. You don't look it. I, I, I don't like, know. I feel like you bought it. I but think so I too. could be wrong. I, we could be very wrong. So um, last year for Pride, Pride starts in uh, June. So next month is, um, is Pride Month. I bought this kit to um, from Nancy over at Trilogy Yarn. She did a collaboration with um, Naughty Knitting Sacks. And included a pattern and some minis to make this super simple slip stitch cowl by Carmen is Knitting, which is really fun. Um, so this is her, the mini set. And so I've been waiting, I think we had probably had a lot going on. So I, during, like, I probably had a lot of things on the needles, which is why I didn't start this. Maybe. Um, so I said, oh, I'll just save it till next year and I'll do it during um, during Pride. So now I'm going to cast this on probably June 1st and see what I can do. It's got all the colors of the rainbow, which is really cool. It's an interesting... Oh, I think there's supposed to be a gray. It, is it in your bag? Oh, maybe. Yes, it is. And the gray came um, separately. Well, oh, that's smart. And so it's got an interesting like transition between the colors. Here, you can kind of see it here. Oh my gosh, I almost used my fingers to zoom into the, the picture. I don't know if you guys can see, but you do some interesting, it looks like slip stitches or something like that in between yeah. the colors. It creates like a little bit of a, um, a texture there, mm -hmm. which is cool. So it looks like it's gonna be a very, very simple Cowl. Um, very excited about that. And you want to see the bag? So it came in this beautiful rainbow bag. If you're offended, close your eyes. If you're offended, you don't watch our podcast. <laughs> Let me turn it inside out. So you guys can get a full... A full appreciate appreciation. Appreciation. <laughs> oh, Willis, I can't even right now. So um, the fun thing about her bags is you can actually use them inside out if you wanted to. Um, but, you know, if you really want to push it. But I think it's fun to, like, have it, like, hidden. And then as you're diving in there, you know, you get a little face full of fun. Face full of naughtiness. So you got your rainbow um, bag here. So, uh, yeah, I'll be casting this on very soon. I have to skein up minis. I hate skeining up minis. We tried doing that. In... Don't say we. You. I tried doing that 
Nasapine. What's it called? <laughs> What's it called? <laughs> Nasapine? <laughs> What's it called, Kevin? I thought it was like a nasty pine. Nasty pine? N-O-S-T-E-P-I-N-N-E. -N -N -E. So I tried using that thing that we got, <laughs> and it didn't work so well for me. But I don't, I don't know. I, I don't have a lot of patience. You don't? No. So that's one of my, uh, my future cast ons. What are you looking for? The nastapine? No, it's downstairs. I was just, I think I'm, it's a nastapine. I'm really debating on no bringing down the Munton floral stuff. Okay, then do it. Just you do you, boo. You make yourself happy. That's what we have to do. Okay. We just have to do we'll what see. we need to do to make ourselves happy. This world is too sad. All right. So let's talk about coupon codes, I guess. Right? Sure. All right. Yeah. So we'll go over some coupon codes. Um, we have... Do you feel the suspense? A little bit. So what I just showed you, we both of these makers have coupon codes with us. Trilogy yes. Yarns. All right. Ready? Yes. So first up, Naughty Knitting Sacks. Code is PurplePants15. 15% 15 off your order. Then Trilogy Yarns, which is NATR15 for 15% off anything excluding her clubs and kits. We have Knit Swag, which is Kevin and Ray. Oh, we have something from Knit Swag, too. Wait till you guys see. Which is 15% off your order. Lila Styles. Mm. Love NATR10. Get you 10% off. Always Queenie Believe. Nine Inch Cirque for 20% off. And then we have Katie Did Bags, which is Kevin and Ray 10 for 10% off your order. Scrappy Angel, which is NATR Fan 10 for 10% off your order. And Jessalyn Janice which is ready 15 for 15% 15 off your order. All yeah. those codes with links to their shops, whether it's their website or their Etsy are down below. They are. So take advantage of those. It's really great when we hear from them and, you know, and they let us know that people are taking advantage of those codes. Absolutely. So that leads us into Owl Post. Owl Post. Oh, we this and this. Here, do you want me to do this one? Because then let me do this one. Because this is another future cast on. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, Le Garçon sent us a beautiful donation uh, as a prize for our Let's Hear It for the Boys. And they sent um, us one as well for ourselves. It is a kit for the Melmer, Melmer by um, Cowl by Max. It's a. Surrey, oops, um, Surrey, it is, and anyway, let me just show you. So the two kits that we have are this one. Look at all this yarn. This is BFL. Oh my god, my eyes are so Would bad. Would you like me to look? Yeah. Do you want me What's, to get you magnified? No, I'm wearing contacts. But I have to replace my contacts. So this is 75% BFL and 25% Nasham wool. Oh. It's a non-superwash DK, 260 yards for 246 meters. So this cowl is, it looks so snuggly and so amazing. So I'm going to actually cast this on in June as well. Um... So that you guys can see how it how it knits up, um, because this will be one of our prizes. So we have two different colorways, or two different kits. So um, this one's like uh, more. I mean, they're both neutral, which yeah. is really really nice. So I might be going with this one for myself, but yeah. um, because I just did a shawl kind of in a similar theme. This is this would actually go this, pretty well with your basic. So basic. so basic. You have Max's khaki, mm -hmm. Jill's dusty rose, natural, mm -hmm. Alex's snowfields, and the other ones. Oh, they are the same color. So this also comes with a fun little pin. Oh yeah. As well, and um, I I'm like I'm so excited. I've never knit with Surrey. Um, this is Surrey alpaca and like silk blend. So that's going to sit on the inside. 
right, and be super soft against your my neck. Did you and, already say it was like the snow glow is real? It's like the big brother of the snow glow is real. Yeah, it doesn't have the um the cord the cords, I guess. But it looks it looks super super cozy. Um, and this is I don't have any more pictures because I didn't. This is already. This is already on my... Oh, yeah, look at it. I mean, that's going to be super fun. It, I mean, I love knitting the snuggles yeah. real, so I think that this would be a super fun knit yeah. as well. Yeah, so I'm super excited. I'm probably going to cast this on in June as well. So there's a couple of days. I just have to decide. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do this kit. So then, um, you know, if it's something that you're interested in or you're excited about... It's um, going to be a let's hear it for the boys' prize. It's going to be a let's hear it for the boys' prize. So, so thank, thank you. you so much, guys. This is really, really sweet. Yeah, and if you are, oh, and look, you also get gonna get a sticker, as well. This is the uh, single malt sticker. Is it? Yeah, he's drinking his his whiskey. Isn't that it? I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Cute. I know. All right. So next up, we got this from oh, Kelly over at Knit Swag. So funny. She started. She has these. I don't think you did that today. I did. Oh, did you? I didn't hear. Sure did. All right. So she started. So Kelly does these knit motif um, items, mm -hmm. right? So she designs these, and we've shown her mugs, which we love. Honest to God, it's my favorite mug. Most used mug. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, everything. Mouse pads. We've had Anything like you knitting, knitter's graph paper. We've oh had. yeah, the postcards. There's a fun um, like license plate luggage. Oh yeah. So she do, she has a ton of stuff. So ton. definitely check her out. Yeah. Um, so this is yarn new. koozies. We have koozies. Oh yeah. That we use in the summertime. Orange is the neutral. Which I I, I said that a couple weeks ago. Yeah, didn't I? Did. Okay. That's yeah. why I thought I was like, hey, I think I said that. Yeah. So this is a good. I mean, look at this. This is a good size. Oh yeah. And then this one, so it's you can obviously customize it however you want. I'm not sure what they're. I told her to surprise us with what. Yeah, no, what and I think that it. that's so great. It's got the you know, it's just so much fun. It's fun to get. I love getting like, <sighs> me too. Notions and stuff like that. Yes. So I love this. Thank you so much. This is great. So. So check her out. Use our coupon code. Yes. For sure. She's got she always comes up with some really fun things. She she's really willing does. to work with people. Like she's done a lot of things that I you know, I've seen her like customize and post on Instagram and stuff. Really, really cool stuff. So get her get it done. All right, so next up, this is from Laura from Knit for Brains. Oh. I actually knew yours was coming. I did not you know You did my... know mine was coming? Yeah, because you kept saying how you needed a new sweater bag. Yeah. And you didn't have one. So you're like, Oh, I need to get a new Knit but for I Brains didn't sweater one. bag. You didn't get one. So Laura from Knit for Brains sent is us. Is the nicest person in the world. She is. So and she, it's really funny because she's watching Profiler, which I love. Yeah. So I just sent her seasons three and four. Um, but she sent me a message saying, hey, I'm sending Ray a bag. Oh, she because, did? Yeah, because he keeps saying he doesn't have a sweater bag. Um, yeah, and that he so needed sweet. to get one. So I didn't she, know that. You didn't tell me that story. I, I know. Maybe you should start uh, talking to me more yeah. often. Absolutely not. Um, but I did not know that she was sending me one as well. So this is her I love it. style of new style of bags too. This is a very similar. It's the wire frame. Mm -hmm. So it pops open. So mine has some knitting relations on it. Not relations. Apparently related not. items. There you go. Knitting related items. And it's it so good. Handles. Yeah, great size bag. I love the wireframe. This one is her. Um, I think that one's so monthly cute. Monthly gnomes or something like that. I think it was great when she posted. I was like, oh my god, I love that fabric. And then her stuff sells out so fast. Um, she's been cranking out bags like left and, and it's right. an all season bag now. Yes. So now I can, you know, let's see where is um, what what month are we in? We're in May. May. Here's there. May. Oh, there's May. He's he's a springtime gnome. You can see little flowers and Cute. buds coming through. Where's June? So super fun. And um, you know what's really clever? Um, I love her, her what she does with her uh, business card. She has a little hole punch. She's very very crafty. 
she puts a little heart hole punch and she always add, she adds like a little stitch marker and this one has a gnome on it adorable adorbs um i love this so much laura thank you so much i didn't yes, i did you, not laura. know that this was coming kevin definitely kept it a secret either he kept it a secret or he just didn't want to talk to me at all but you know what so also and i have to get better at this i have a cricket and my mom did like stamping up like stamps and stuff and was always like creative like making her own cards we don't really send we we have to get better at like making stuff because look how cute I she know. sent this card that she obviously made herself it looks like a stamp like a stampin up thing this one says knitting keeps us from unraveling oh adorable. isn't that cute and then she has her own little her own little stamp so you can find her on knit for brains designs on etsy um and also knit for brains on youtube which is her youtube channel along with karen who we send a lot of love uh, karen's way and um yeah so thank you so much that was really really sweet all right so that is all the um i will post and now we have break in the bank yes right so i made one purchase same in the last 30 days oh wait Just can i kidding. show one more card yeah so one of you also sent oh, some yeah. uh, some more hats and blankets our way so that I can make a donation to um, to the hospital. So thank you so much. Um, came all the way from Canada, I think. And um, I, I always ask if I can say your name, and I always forget, so I didn't. But look at this card. I don't know if this is something that you made. It looks very handmade. I love this card. Look at this one. So it's you got a so little good. muslin like knitting bag. You have your knitted items. Look at the little knitting needles there. Tape measure. And then you, even the pattern is in here. Is that not the cutest thing? She wrote a beautiful message inside. Um, it's so good. I know. It's that's like such knitting a beautiful with the, card. This, and so I was trying to like read it the it's like knitting with the tubular stitch it looks like a knitting pattern so you guys are so great with your handmade cards we need to step up Adorbs. our game so thank you anyway go ahead all right um i've made one purchase this i made after watching um kristen and yeah maddie yes and the we share needles podcast so they worked with um kimber's cozy creations who is a yarn dyer and came up with this colorway, these colorways. So it's two and I bought two full skeins of, or a full skein of each colorway and then the mini set. So oh. this color is, I believe this one's Maddie's. This is, yes, this is movie knitting. Cause she likes to knit at the movies. This one, is called Whip It Out because that's something um, that that's Kristen say. said. Mm -hmm. And this is the two of them together, 50 gram skein of each. So I knew that Ray would really like that one. So he's going to knit a pair of socks with this and this will be his contrast. And then yes. I'm going to knit a pair of socks with this and this will be my contrast. So we'll be like really cute. <laughs> so they're supposed to be picking out some patterns for us um, I... to knit. No, you just want to do vanilla? No, I don't want to do vanilla. Um, what? It, um, what? I think I might do a pair of coffee talk. Oh, I just I, I did coffee talk lately. I need a textured one, but not lace. I want a textured one, too. I just don't yeah, want no, lace. Yeah, no, I don't want lace. That's, I, I think that we lace. said that as a rule. I guess we could do, is it blueberry waffles, chocolate waffles, something waffles, violet Ooh. waffles? Violet waffles is the hat. Blueberry waffles, I think, is the sack sock, and then um, there's Hermione's everyday sock. I feel like that's lacy. To do is it? I think there's yarn over, so I think it's a little well, more. Well, there's also than you guys is. gave me a lot of cool ideas for patterns. There's that one from um, Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears. Yeah, that crinkle looked, crunkle. Yeah, that looked really cool. So I really Maybe that. Yeah, I really would like to try that. I think. Maybe we'll just do that. Maybe we'll hmm. do the same pattern. We'll be cute, huh? Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness, that'd be so sweet. All right, next. Is this it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't bought anything. My else. next um, purchase is not a knitting related one, but it is um, crafty related. It's uh, another needle felting kit 
from Going Gnome. This is their Pride Gnome, which I thought is super cute. Um, it is. Yeah, so it's got a little rainbow hat. And then um, I might do something different with the beard. Why? I might do a rainbow beard. Because Needlefell, then you just do, you do whatever you want. Okay. I'm thinking like a rainbow beard would be really cute too. Don't you think? Let's see if what I have left over. So the kits are great. Um, they come with everything that you need except for the mat. The foam. The foam mat. You can use different things. I've seen people use like, um, they have like sponges or... Um, can you use a yoga mat if you're not using it for yoga maybe? You can, but you know what? You can also use yoga mats as blocking mats. You can. I think um, somebody just recently said that on our Somewhere, comments, somebody mentioned but that. I think that Caleb from, I think from Bearded Pearl used yoga mats before for blocking. I feel like that's Possibly. where I first heard it. Anyway, so this is the Pride Gnome. I'll be doing that very soon as well. It's nice. Cool the beans. is good. And, and that's it. That's it. So now let's just talk about what we've been reading and watching. All right. What have I read? Let's see. What a short podcast we have. This is one of our shortest ones. Well, I... Oh, okay. So I finished Murmuration by TJ yeah. Klune. It was so good. Like, so good. I knew kind of what was going on i didn't know how it was going to end mm -hmm. the end was a little surprising to me um it was such a good book so this book when you're reading it throughout the entire book you have no idea what's going on you just know something's off based on um, the interaction between characters based on some of the things that are happening to the main character yeah um it was in I don't know, it was kind of unexpected, but I knew the way that the story was going, I knew where it was going. I just kind of didn't know how it was going to get there. Um, I I don't even know. I just don't want to ruin it, so I don't want to say too much in yeah. case somebody wants to read it, but, but you... I highly recommend it. It is mm -hmm. a male-male romance, but it's so much more than... His books are so much more than yeah, that. Yeah, that's it, not that's, what the focus is. I think it... it it's just classified as that because two of the characters are men and they're in a relationship mm -hmm. um, or whatever. So, but it's so, I don't know. It's so good. It was so screwed up. Um, and I just, I would, I loved it. I would recommend it. So I finished that and then I started reading um, Witchmark by C.L. Polk. This is... I did not know that this had a male-male romance in it. I picked it up because it said it's one of the 100 best science fiction novels, like, ever written. Um, and it's fairly new. It's come out within the past couple of years. It takes place in another, I'm going to say, universe. But it reminds me of, like, Downton Abbey times. Like, his snoring, like, breathing right now really is really cute. cute. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that Downton Abbey era. Um, there is horse-drawn carriages. There's a mention of an automobile, but it's very rare. There's electricity, but it's it, there's a lot of magic in it. So it's aether is also a power there that like lights um, run on a lot of bicycles in it. So it's and it reminds me of. Um, the village kind of in Downton Abbey. So the main character is a mage and has kind of run away from his privileged life mm -hmm. uh, because he was not, um, there's two levels of a mage. There's a storm caller, I think is what it was or storm singer. And then there's a secondary and secondaries are kind of act as a battery for the storm singers. They're not considered very important. And he is a secondary, but he thought, and their powers are called, they call them tricks instead of like a skill. So it's very, look, they're looked down upon um, and they get bound to a storm singer and they just 
kind of follow them around and do whatever the storm storm singer wants he did not want that life for himself so he ran away and you pick up i think it's like seven years later Mm -hmm. and where he is in his life and um things are coming out about just the society in general and um if you are there's also witches but witches are come from poor families Mm -hmm. but they're really the same they're just classified as witches because they're poor um so he's learning a lot about like society and and the differences between them and things are being uncovered and there's a bigger issue going on a bigger war and that's recently ended and the impact it's had on the soldiers there's been like a murder that he's trying to solve there's a legendary person in here so there's a lot going on but it's really last night i could have finished it but it was really late i had about like an hour and a half in or left in it and i wanted to finish but it was just after 11 i was like you'll finish it soon i'll finish it tonight i'll make sure i finish it tonight i want to figure out how it ends and i believe it's a trilogy oh yes nice anything else and to you i finished two books um boy i'll tell you i'm loving the audible like listening to the books now i'm fine can't do it i didn't think that i could either but like i i've been listening to it on my way to work when i take him for a wlk get coffee spitting up at me mm-hmm. um early in the morning when kevin's still sleeping i'll sit on the couch and put on the book and do a little knitting uh every once in a while when i don't have like a workout or whatever and so i yeah i get through them pretty quick i i increased the speed at which i was which i was listening to so i think i'm listening to them at like 1.3 i think when i try that's what i was gonna try at anything more gets a little bit well for i mean we'll slowly get into it i also joined goodreads so i've been trying i think i talked about this but i was trying to like update my goodreads so that's keeping things a little bit easier for me um i finished the house in the cerulean sea by tj clune it is it was amazing. So good. It was so amazing. I I loved it. It was such a feel good book. I wasn't sure if I would like the narrator. Um, oh, I, I should probably pull up Audible so I can see like who narrates it. The um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like the narrator because I was so used to Kurt Graves who narrated the last like four books that I read from TJ Klune. I thought he did such a great job. I was like obsessed with how he did the voices and stuff. Um, this one, sorry, I pulled up the wrong title. This one's narrated by Daniel Henning. He's actually, he was really, really good. So the premise of this book is um, the world is there are magical folk in the world, but it's very taboo. They don't have like equal rights. Um, it's kind of like a one of their brig- biggest like propaganda things is like putting up posters like see something, say something. So if you see somebody that's doing like magic or not really doing magic, but you have magical creatures, so you could be you know a yeti or something like that if you see somebody like that you've got to report them and then there's these divisions and this one uh the main character happens to be in this um division of like magical youth and keeping an eye on these orphanages where they send these kids to and he's like a caseworker and goes there and investigates and makes sure that everything is up to snuff well he gets a new assignment to go to this um orphanage uh, at this house in the cerulean sea it's like on an island and um the extremely upper management who are like the the head of this organization it's a very humorous fun book it is um it took me a minute to get acclimated to it because i had just gotten through the um the green, the green creek series which is a lot like, it's very heavy um but good feeling good but very heavy and so it's really funny the interactions he goes to this island and he investigates there and then he meets the kids in the orphanage and the um the troll the director and so she's a gnome which yeah the, i know yeah, yeah no it's gnome. very very cute the, it's a ador- it's adorable it's just the, so good it is so good 
there are a lot of um, adult themed like feelings in there too. It's not just right. um, kids, you know. It's not like a young adult book or anything. Although I guess it it could be. Um, mm, I don't know. But it's really good. It's all about like it's it's about journey again and um, getting away from the mundane and not being afraid to stick up for other people. Um, Family. Yeah. It's- there, his themes. T.J. Klune, I think, has some amazing themes in his books so far that I've I've been exposed to. Um, but it's such a feel good move, uh, feel good feel good book. I didn't cry near as much as I did during um, Wolf Song. No, yeah, Wolf Song. Wolf Song's the first book. Yeah, but I did um, I did tear up a few times just because it felt so so nice. Nothing is sad. It just felt it just feels nice. So um, I loved it and. What's really cool is I started I follow TJ Clune on Instagram, mm-hmm. and other people also who read his books. Some of them um, feel a certain way too, like they they get they very touched by it and inspired by it. And he shares in his stories sometimes people like who do artwork. They're so they're so good, good. based on the characters and this world. And there's um, there's some characters in this book, and I'm not going to spoil it because I think that you really should read this book. I highly highly recommend it. Um, that people do drawings of and, um, and it's really sweet. There's, there's a boy that his dream in life is to be a bellhop. And so they have this, yes. it's so good. Um, so anyway, if, uh, follow TJ Clune if you're, if you're, um, into that, check out this book. It's amazing. So it's so funny because I follow one of the artists. Oh, you do? That he features quite often because mm-hmm. they do a lot of illustrations of his work so this is alessia trunfio is one of the artists and here is um this i would say is from raven oh yeah this is from raven song it's gordo and um what's his face mark yeah so this is when they're young Aww. right it's like anime almost. And then this is one of my favorite. This is Gordo and the boys in book. Oh yeah, when they're sleeping on the floor. Yeah. It's I don't know. It's really it just this person does such amazing yeah. work of T J. Clune stuff. It's so cool. Um, where's one of my favorites from them? There's one with Ox and Joe in the opening scene of the book. I don't know where it is. It just it just was like it depicted them so well. Is this it? No, I don't know. I'll maybe I'll find. Yeah, it. Um, the next book that I finish is also by T.J. Klune because I'm so obsessed. Obsessed is an understatement. It's called Under the Whispering Door. Um, I really can't zoom in, but um, Under the Whispering Door. I also listened to this. This one is narrated by Kurt Graves, again, who is probably by far one of my favorite uh, narrators. And it was another amazing book. It It's a, um, basically, this is, this, uh, it's about a tea shop that becomes, that's like a way station for people who have passed away. And um, the one of the main characters who is there is the um, like the ferryman, ferryman who you know helps souls kind of cross over and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a unique perspective on how that works. Um, there are reapers and and different things. It's kind of there's a there's a hierarchy and organization to like how the afterlife works and getting people ready to pass over or cross over. And the main character uh, is one who did not live the best life and um, was not like a really nice person. Wasn't like a murderer or anything, but just wasn't like a nice person. And ends up, you know, going here because this is like where he was assigned to be crossed over and, and paired up with the team that's there. And it's just, a, it was a wonderful, it, again, journey of this guy who, you know, I'm not going to ruin anything, but as you can imagine, somebody who doesn't live the best life, you know, through like death and being in this, in this like, um, middle ground kind of is able to turn his quote unquote life, you know, back around and 
have learned some lessons there and become this really positive person. And um, it was really, really good. There are some triggering moments in this book, though, if you are going to read it. Um, it does touch on suicide and it does touch on uh, murder. Not much, but the feelings are there and like they do mention it. So if those things do trigger you, just as an FYI, um, heads up. But I do highly recommend this book as well. So far, the books that I've read by TJ Klune are stellar. I um, haven't read one that I didn't like. No, absolutely stellar. I think he does a, an amazing job creating the um the world and really differentiating between the the characters and their personalities like i feel like they feel real to me obviously i'm, I'm listening to it as well so it could right. be different if i'm just reading it um the narr narrators obviously have a lot to do with that too with their inflections and and voices sometimes that they do but great um i laughed in this one i i teared up once i don't think i cried cried um but really, really good. There's a lot of humor. Um, yeah, it was a really good book. They're they're so good. I've yeah. been having so much fun. And then I'm reading. To, I'm listening to one, and I'm reading one. I started the Night Circus. I think I was talking about maybe starting this. I'm not sure who it's by. Um, you guys are probably all screaming at the screen because you've probably um, read this before. But the Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. It um, takes place in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And it's all about a circus that only comes to town uh, at nighttime when hmm. the sun goes down. I wouldn't have got that from the name of the book. No? No. Interesting. You can't judge a book by its cover, though, you know? <laughs> but there, I, I don't understand a lot of what's happening yet. <laughs> I really don't because it, it's jumping all over the place. Um, it's setting up little storylines, so the, the timeline is not very linear. There are pockets that we're learning about, um, but it's hard to understand for me right now because I'm, I'm about halfway through the book, maybe a little bit less, um, where the, the, the main timeline is, like where we are in, in what's happening right now. I think I know, um, but it's just kind of weird. It, it doesn't set up a lot of a lot of what's happening. It's just like you're kind of dropped into stuff and it's just using this time now to explain kind of where those things are coming from so you're putting piecing together the world and a background with a little bit of information that you're getting from each little chapter um it's it is enjoyable um yeah i just i am i just i want to know what's like what's happening i need to be linear right now and like so i'm hoping that 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 comes into play soon but so far so good it's it the language is really good the author is very well written. It sounds like, um, yeah, she it, the the words are fun to read. Like she uses a different, not different language, but you know those authors that choose some of like so really good like juicy words that I love words. Do you? Yeah, I have a couple of words for you today after we're done with this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I am reading that one right now on the Kindle, and I am listening to Artemis. Uh, this is not a T.J. Klune book. And Artemis is by Andy uh, Ware, mm -hmm. W-E-I-R. It's the same author that wrote The Martian. I didn't read the book, but we saw the movie with Matt Damon. So this is Artemis. And it is narrated by Rosario, Rosario Dawson. She's doing a great job, by the way. Hmm. Yeah. it's she must be an actress. She sounds like she would be. Yeah, she. Uh, I know she gets in the character pretty easily. Yeah, she does. Good. She can kind of flip back and forth too. Uh, this is fun. This is um, very different. I'm not usually a space. I love space. I love Star Trek. I'm obsessed, obviously, in Star, Star Wars, Wars and stuff. But my reading is usually typically like magical fantasy. But um, this is uh, space. The the Artemis Final frontier. Is, it is not the fun. I mean, it's it's one of the frontiers. I think that's happening. I don't know what else is happening on Earth right now. Sequest was like another frontier. People were under the water. Do you remember Sequest? That show? I remember, but I never watched it. I watched it a few times. And then I was like, you're just trying to be Star Trek underwater. So this book it takes place on Artemis. Artemis is a, uh, the first city on the moon. Um, so it's been established for a little while. There are, 
the main character was six years old when she was brought to the moon and it's a very smart book there are there's a lot of science in the book and i don't know if it's it's true science or just like science fiction science maybe science fiction because it's on the moon no i mean like when you're talking about like mechanics and oh. electronics and stuff like that they're talking about resistors and different things and it, the main character is very very smart um and she's not the she's not the mm, most straight edge person out there she does a lot of illegal things um to make some money but she is she's a uh, one of our flawed you know flawed heroes heroine heroine types her name is Max. She also has, but she's also has her, you know, she's kind of like Han Solo a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, where he, he does some shady stuff, but he's got some morals still kind of mixed in there a little bit too. So, uh, it's, she's, she's helping kind of, um, running. She's, yeah, she's running this like heist kind of on the moon doing some illegal stuff. And, of course, it all goes to shit. And so now... You know, your mouth has been... You've been swearing a lot in this episode. Have I? I'm going to have to give I this think like that a you've been rated point... R. Well, it's not made for children. Anyway, everything has gone down the caca tubes. I'm going to have to tell your mother actually not to watch because she's going to be offended by how much she, she might hurts. Be she's going to be embarrassed. She's not going to tell anybody that she has a son who does this anymore. I am being abused, so if you're out there, <laughs> no, honestly, it's this is a good book too. It's it's like full of adventure, and it, it, I love the writing style of this. Max is the main character. She's also um, talking in the first person, and she's speaking to us as the reader, like we're sitting across the table. So like, she'll say things like, "I can't say it out loud because it made me laugh really," um, but it was a dirty it was a dirty joke. But she recognized that she was telling a dirty joke and she said, get your mind out of the gutter kind of thing to us as the reader. It's just funny. Like, she just felt like she was interacting with me personally. Oh, good. Yeah. Good book. So far, so good. Um, I think I have a few hours left. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's all. All right. And... And scene. Okay. I think that... that's it. <clears throat> yeah. So, we have... Let's see. Next, Kevin's birthday is coming up. June 7th is his birthday. And we're going to go to the Elephant Trunk uh, here in Connecticut next weekend. Yep. It's a flea market. Yep. Here, it's like an all-day type of thing. So it's a nice, you know, we go there for a couple, like, two to three hours, you know, three or four hours, whatever it is, and just walk around. Sometimes you find some good treasure. Sometimes you don't find anything at all. And then we do lunch and a drink afterwards. So it's always a nice day. Yeah. And then the week after that is National, no, Worldwide Knit in Public, Public Day, Day. June and that, 11th. Yeah, which is a Saturday, and we are sched- we should be podcasting that day. So we'll do it the day as after. Well. So we might, yeah, we'll pod- our next podcast will probably be on a Sunday. It depends. It depends well, what Sunday time we we're get having up. some friends over, too. So we're going to be busy oh. the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so we may be able to podcast, Maybe we'll podcast prior before. to going to Knit in Public You'll get a podcast um the next time but maybe saturday or sunday or maybe yeah. friday night absolutely not no way you and i can barely podcast after noon because we're done for the day we're not gonna podcast at night after dinner that's unheard of all right that's it that's all we have for you guys so if you stuck around thank you for hanging out with us for the last hour and, hour and almost 45 minutes well, not really. Hour no. 40 minutes. So. This is the shortest episode we've ever done. Not really. I think so. Ah, what else? So we hope for the next two weeks you guys have a good two weeks. Get some crafting in and we will see you all in a fortnight. Bye, guys. Bye.